Listen to me, if we don't have a genuine concern for others, if we don't have a genuine care, a genuine love for others, we're gonna miss this. We're gonna miss the nurturing process of the relationships. We're not gonna be able to, to break down any walls. Which is funny, because I actually remember, that's, that's one of the two things that God called us to do, right? Teacher, what are the most important commandments? Love God and love others. And when we do this, we respect them, we value them, we give them that sense of security, we give them that, that sense of hope, we call out the greatness in them, we encourage them. And here's what I know is that when a person feels encouraged, they can face the impossible and overcome adversity. When we offer a fresh wind, man, a person can conquer the world. When we offer that breath of fresh air, and George M. Adams calls, calls encouragement oxygen to the soul. Think about the last time that you were encouraged. What did it do for you? Imagine what the world would look like if we spent more time encouraging than cutting others down. Imagine what the schools would look like. Imagine what your workplace would look like if we spent more time lifting others up than tearing others down. Remember, I shared this last week, but what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. That's encouragement. And through giving them this, through, through nurturing people and relationships and interactions, we're giving them that, that opportunity to have self-worth, to, to see who they are in the eyes of Jesus, to have a sense of belonging, a sense of purpose, a positive perspective. Again, calling out the greatness in them, giving them a, a sense of significance and of hope. But here's the sad thing when it comes to, to changing a mindset like this is, for most people, it's not what they are that holds them back, it's what they think they're not. And by us being intentional and nurturing our relationships and our interactions, we may have an opportunity to affect that. And so again, in the sense of practicality, I wanna give you some, some practical steps on how we can be a nurturing people with our relationships. The first one is, is simple, it's believe in people. We gotta see the best in people and strive to bring it out of them. We gotta give them hope. We gotta give them encouragement. We gotta see every person as worth the time that we wanna spend. Let me ask you this. Do you see every single person as a 10? Do you see every single person as a child of God? And let me say that's really easy to say yes inside these four walls. But when you go outside and you see the person that is living in the hardships of the community, when you see a person out there begging, do you see that person as a 10? Do you see that person as a child of God? Do you see that person worth nurturing? We gotta believe in all people. The second thing is we gotta be present and help people. Here's the reality. You can't nurture from a distance. Remember, it's that law of proximity. You gotta be up close and you gotta be personal. And, and actually, I got a couple helpers that I would love to welcome uh, to the platform today. Can you all help me welcome the helpers today? Can you help me? Oh, come on, give it up. Come on. Hi, guys. We got Dave and we got Ben. Can everybody say hi, Dave? Hi, Ben. Dave, not that Ben doesn't. Let me just say that. I didn't say that last service. I need to say that. Dave has some. It just kind of got weird. Dave has some muscles, all right? <laughs> Dave has the gift of strength. You know what I'm saying? Dave, can you lift Ben up? Uh, yeah. Go ahead, show us. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Can we give it up for Dave? That's great. That's great. Uh, <laughs> but Dave is able to, to lift Ben, right? I want you to see that. He's able to, to help him up to lift him up. Now, Ben, can you go, could you just sit on that mark over there? I kind of feel like a, like a kindergarten teacher. Just go sit on your spot, right? <laughs> Dave, can you go to this one over here? Here's what I want you all to see. We know that Dave is strong enough to pick up Ben. From a distance, Dave, can you pick Ben up right now? From right there? No. This is, hey, we live in the same town. I see you sometimes. We're friendly, we say hi. 
and that's it. If you were to take a step closer, Dave, come up to this one. A little bit closer with our, with our relationship. Dave, can you pick him up now? Still can't. This is maybe, hey, I, I, I see you weekly on Sundays. We shake hands, we hug, I ask you how the kids are. That's as far as the relationship goes. Even if you were to take another step, one step closer to him, this is, this is man, maybe we work together. And I see you Monday through Friday. Again, I ask you how the kids are, ask you how the spouse is doing, how's, how's your job going, let me help you with that. Can you pick him up from there, Dave? Close? What's it missing? It's missing the next step. If you were to take one more step right here, that next step is what we call intentionality. That next step is called being present. And when we're actually present with people, then we can lift them up. That is how we help others in this life. It's not by being distant. Come on. It's by being intentional, and it's by being present. Hey, y'all, can we thank Dave and Ben? But listen to me, that is what we do in life groups. We are putting ourselves in a position where we can be present with people, where we can be close with people, where we can be real with people, where we can be intentional with people, and that is how we will help others who need to be lifted up, up. Or maybe you're in this room today, and you're the one who needs some help lifting. You need to be lifted up. We cannot nurture from a distance. We have to be present. The next one, number three, is this. A person of influence has faith in people. A person of influence has faith in people, believing that, that every single person is a child of God, believing that every single person, like I said earlier, is a, is a 10, no matter what their current circumstance is, that the message of hope is for them, that Jesus is for them. Because here's the sad reality is that most people don't have faith in themselves. Too many people in this life have, have trouble even believing in themselves and that they believe that no matter what they attempt or what they try and do, that they will fail. Whether it's getting clean from an addiction, whether it's getting out of an unhealthy relationship, whether it's trying out this Jesus thing, I'm going to sin again, I'm going to mess up again, I, 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 can't, I can't do it. But here's what I know deep down. The reality is that difficulties seldom defeat people, but a lack of faith in themselves always does. I can make it over a roadblock. I can push some things out of the way. I've got grit. But if I don't have faith in myself, it will always defeat me. But if we can step in and we can have faith in people, and we can believe that, that people, uh, they, that they are a 10 and they can do the impossible and they can get out of their current circumstance and that the hope is for them and we can tie it to Jesus and we can show them that through a relationship with Jesus, their best days are yet to come. And maybe we can have an impact on that. Maybe we can use our influence to help them. Because another sad reality is that even while most people don't have faith in themselves, to take it one step further, most people don't have someone who has faith in them. Most people living in hardships do not have people that have faith in them. And unfortunately, unfortunately in our society today, this feeling of, of isolation is, is still present. That, that, that this feeling, this strong sense of community that we once had, it, it, it's rare. And even with, even with parenting, family support, it, it, it's, it's in a deficit, they say. Bill Glass tells a story. He did some research one time, and he talked to, to inmates about their past and their upbringing. And in the research that he did, he found out that 90% of the inmates that he talked to at one point in their childhood were told by a parent or a person of authority, they're going to lock you up and put you into prison. 90%. Instead of instilling that I have faith in you, you were made for greatness. We're going to help you overcome whatever issues you're going through right now. We're in this together. 
And when we have faith in people, we can begin to help heal that void and watch Jesus work. So how can we become a people that has faith in people? The first is emphasize people's strengths. Let me tell you today that a compliment or a word of encouragement goes a long way. And if we identify strengths in people, we are watering seeds of encouragement to help them grow. The second is be in the trenches with others. Take time to hear their stories, to to listen, to to make them feel valued, that 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 they are a child of God, that they do mean something. And with that, man, hopefully instill in them that they can overcome whatever they're going through. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring and ding that bell so you never miss a video or a live stream, and give this a share to one of your friends. And remember, we go live every single Sunday. Till next time, pray God's peace.